June 6, 1944, the morning mists off the coast of France concealed the single largest amphibious landing force ever assembled. The Allies were poised to attack Fortress Europe, taking the war to Germany on the ground. The Germans had laden the invasion beaches with countless obstacles designed to keep the Allied forces at bay. But what the Allied commanders feared most during their assault was a devastating air attack. Despite its previous losses, Nemesis still had weapons capable of attacking the invasion forces. For the Battlehawks, it would be a dramatic showdown with Nemesis. We've got incoming. Nemesis has launched a full barrage of their V-1 buzz bombs at our position. Only Rourke and I are at the airfield, so we're gonna have to make do. We've gotta intercept and destroy these terror weapons before they rain down on our base. Lyle has pulled another rabbit out of his hat. This time he's been working on upgrading the ammo for the B-17's ball turret. We're going out to field test his upgrades. We'll each be in the ball turret of two specially modified B-17's heading out for a bombing run. 
We can better test the upgrades with a friendly competition of shooting down the most krauts. No choice this time, Chase.
Toomey's time in the German prison camp hasn't dampened his spirits. This time he's claiming that his Gloucester Meteor, a new jet engine craft the Brits have developed, can do better than any aircraft at my disposal. We'll find out in a free hunt against German ME-163s. The rest of the Battle Hawks are putting their money on me. That's a good bet.
you've outclassed even me. You're an excellent pilot, Chase. Hope to fly with you again sometime. June 6, 1944. D-Day. The invasion of France. It's been a long time coming. We're all pumped up, yet pretty edgy. Our forces have put together the largest amount of manpower and equipment ever. I've seen some of it. It's just amazing. The invasion will succeed, but I fear the price will be high. The Germans are dug in and ready. Despite our previous attacks, Nemesis is not finished either. They're sure to strike the invasion beaches. We figure they still have V-2 rockets and advanced aircraft stockpiled to throw against our troops. Rourke says we're going to attack when the naval bombardment begins at dawn. After we destroy the Nemesis base, we'll provide general support for the invasion force. It's almost time to mount up, so I think I'll wish everyone good luck one last time. May God be with us all. I'm sure you'll be facing stiff opposition today, so upgrade the hell out of whatever craft you choose. Field upgrade applied. The new field upgrade is complete. Field upgrade applied to your plane. Good luck with it. Nemesis has three launch sites set up inland of Normandy. They are priority targets and must be eliminated at all costs. The American destroyers have started shelling. Head inland and attack the north launch site. We must get the V-2s while they're on the ground. Chase, destroy the V-2s on their launch pads. If steam starts venting from the base of a V-2, it means it's being primed for liftoff. Was auf alle Stellungen! Zielen und feuern! For the love of God, these bloody missiles again! I'm going to personally shoot the German genius that thought that up! Watch out! Enemy aircraft ahead! One of the is patrolling above the launch site. We'll concentrate on the one night is. Chase, you hit those launch pads! Dentelhawk, sie haben unsere Rampen gebunden! Angreifen und zerstören! Der Greifmann! Ja, schlägt schon wieder so nach Neues! Feuern Sie die Fahreinsrakete ab! Machen Sie die Fahrtmeister klar! Chase, the V2s of the Northern Rocks are climbing. Quick, get those rockets before they leave the ground! Devils, they're firing V1s at our ships! Intercept the V1s if you can, but the V2s Let those get away from us. 
Catapult incoming. Dick away, Chase. Look lively, gentlemen. More 190s inbound. Look out, Chase. Another missile coming up fast.
Our men are hitting the beach, Chase. Keep an eye out for trouble. Amerikanische Narr. We meet again. I have prepared well for this day. Now we shall see who is the better man. Oh my God, what the hell is that, Chase? It, it's detaching aircraft. Yet they look like jets. You have put up a worthy struggle, but ultimately it was futile. Nemesis bomber, vernichten Sie unsere Gäste. put up a worthy struggle, and ultimately it was futile. Nemesis Bomber, vernichten Sie unsere Gäste! dass sie ihre Mission beenden können. Ich begleite sie, Reiniger.
have put up a worthy struggle. But ultimately, it was futile. Nemesis Bomber, vernichten Sie unsere Gäste! Jawohl, Robert Krieger. An alle Maschinen, vernichten Sie unsere Feinde! Konnte doch hier nicht aufhalten. Reiniger, sind Sie auf Kurs? Hier ist Reiniger. Wir nähern uns dem Zielgebiet. Direkt am Abwurf der Landung vor. That's another Junkers 390. God knows what it's carrying. Shoot it down. Ich werde dafür sorgen, dass Sie Ihre Mission beenden können. Ich begleite Sie, Reiniger. Krieger's flying at the Damn Airborne Fortress and he's screening the approach of the Junker.
Hasselhoff. And that Americana, Chase. All right, we stop them. Now our boys can take the beaches. On to Berlin. Somehow I don't think we've seen the last of Krieger and Nemesis. Chase, you're one hell of a pilot. See you back home. We've still got a long road ahead. With the D-Day invasion a success, the Allied crusade in Europe had finally begun. The Battlehawks had fought throughout the greatest war in history, playing a vital but untold role in the Allied victories. Their daring efforts ended Hitler's atomic weapons project and prevented his terror weapons from ever being used. But they knew the Third Reich would now grow more desperate, pouring resources into its secret weapons program like never before. In one sense, for these weary pilots, the war was just beginning. June 7th, 1944. Have we seen the last of Nemesis? I doubt it. I know they're out there somewhere, waiting and preparing for our next encounter. We've come a long way, fought a lot of battles, seen a lot of good people go down fighting the good fight. I'm one of the lucky ones, I guess. I've lived to fight one more day. Great. Let's uh, do that one more time. Nobody's answering. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's a terribly generic. That's uh, okay. Now I know everybody. Here. What's it like to fly? I don't know. You know well, I guess I'd say my favorite would be the P-51 Mustang because it's the fastest that I've flown. It's the most popular. It's it's kind of the definitive fighter of all time. And you know, it just looks so good and it sounds so good. And everyone knows what a Mustang is. You know, it's uh, you mentioned P-51 Mustang and everybody goes, ooh, ah. And so so that's uh, you know one of my favorite. I um, the Air Museum working with Lucas Arts has been great. Uh, uh, I've had a really good relationship with uh, you guys, and uh, you've been very thoughtful, and uh, I can tell you've done your homework by the questions you ask, and, uh, and we've seen your product that you put out. That's why we're involved with you. Did you mute his click? Did you mute his click? Yes, I so he can play again? Yes, can, yes, yes. Sorry. Well, I believe authenticity is uh, uh, very important. You know, I see a lot of things, uh, we talk about Hollywood, you know, how much effort does it take to do it right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna create a train of thought, why not create the real train of thought instead of uh, going off on something just because there was no effort put into thinking about it? But uh, that's that's what I enjoy about the authentic sounds and the sights. Maybe there isn't ten people that know the difference, but uh, I, I guarantee you that in the future, as time goes on, it'll be very valuable. <laughs> Uh, of course, our, our president of the Air Museum, Steve Hinton, um, is, is quite an accomplished warbird pilot. And I may be biased to say this, but he, I think he's probably the best warbird pilot in the world. And it, it's not just being a pilot uh, that makes you a warbird pilot. It's also being a, a mechanic, uh, knowing the, the systems of the aircraft, knowing whether it's you know good to go or not good to go. And, uh, and Steve Hinton has you know addressed that all the way around. He, he knows the airplanes in and out. And, 
he can fly them well and also maintain them well. Okay, Tim. Mm -hmm. Uh, low brass can just back down a dynamic and Okay, stay low open. brass, you just go to it's come in at 133 mezzo forte. Um, okay, and trumpets you are open at 135, okay? But then mute it at 139. Can't do it. There's no place to put them in. Well, they got they got two measures. Oh yeah, they do. Sorry. I was looking at the trombone part. And then for 139, Charlie Allen muted. And they can stay muted to the end. From 139 to the end, muted. Okay, so you're open. Sorry, this is so confusing. 135 and 6, you're open, and then you're muted till the end. Brass, low brass, just lower your dynamic, except first trombone. We can really use you. Um, I'm trying to see if you're doubling the melody, but you're really not. The graveyard is full of string players who have done that. We have an extra horn, a horn part? Here we go. No. Four into one. Two. Like that. Yes, here we go. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>